Hello, this is Clem McDonald with yet another VisualBasic.net tutorial series focusing on Windows applications development. In this particular tutorial, we're going to look at using arrays in a different kind of way, where we're actually going to use the data type of our array to be controls. So in other words, when you need to put controls on a Windows application form, and you don't know how many you need or you need them to be flexible it is easier to add them and run at runtime rather than designing the user interface using the toolbox and properties etc we're going to actually develop these at runtime and we're going to add 11 labels to a windows forms application and not create anything in the user interface so let's just jump into it here. So you can see that in my Visual Basic project, I have a form, and there's nothing on this form. If I go onto the form and I highlight the whole thing, there's nothing there. Nothing gets selected. So what we're going to do is we're going to create everything from scratch. So if I double click on the form, it's going to create my form load event. And from here, we're actually going to have the ability to add the labels as we go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a an array and we're going to call this array labels and we're going to set the, the type of the array to label. I hope you can see where we're going here. So I'm going to define another temporary local variable here for a label and you'll see why I need this in a second. Now we're going to use a simple loop, so for i as integer and we're going to go from 0 to 10 okay we're going to, I'm just hard coding the numbers at this point but uh, we could go ahead and, and do more so for instance I could change this to um, labels dot uh, length minus 1 so now what we can do is we can actually use the loop to go ahead and create our labels on the form. So we can go labels i dot name equals well, I'll put my label and i to string. And we can go ahead and do a whole bunch of properties in here. So we're going to have labels i here a lot so I'm just because I'm going to do this a lot I'm just going to go like this okay so the different properties we're going to set so we're going to set some text on it and the text is going to be num something like that okay and then we're going to set the location of the label so because we haven't we don't have the tools of drag and drop in that to position things exactly where we want we have to pixel layout in order to get things where we want. So we're just going to set the left hunt, the left to be 100 pixels from the left hand side and then we're going to say the top is going to equal 50 plus 25 times i. The reason why I have a little formula here is because if you make them all the top all these labels are actually going to be right on top of each other and you only see the last one that was rendered. So we're going to shift them all down by 25 with a margin of 50 at the top which means that we have to set the height and width as well so if we set the height I think you can see that it's going to be 25 and that's because I've done 25 times the current number and then we're going to set the width to doesn't really matter at this point 50 as long as our forms 150 since left is 100 and width is 50 so the right hand side of the label will be at 150 then we're going to set the back color and the back color, we're going to use this, the, the loop again to set a back color. So we're going to do 25 times i. So it's going to give us a grayscale is what it's actually going to do, which is pretty cool once you see it. So we get, we're going to have a little grayscale there. And then we're going to set the four color as well, which allows us to set our font color. And in this case, we're going to set our, our font to white. Now if you imagine, as we go through our grayscale, the first few are actually going to be 
fairly dark, so the white text works well. But once we get to the upper end of the color spectrum, the light, the color is going to be very light. White text may not work. So we're going to do a quick little thing here and say if, if height is greater than five, which is about halfway through, right? Or how about we say if i is less than labels dot length divided by two, then we're going to set the four color to black. And that's pretty cool. So now what we can do is let's set L dot border style and let's do a fixed 3D style border. The last thing we need to do now is actually take this label and add it to the um, add it to the form itself. So we can go me dot controls dot add labels i. And so now each each iteration of the loop, we're going to add those to the um, we're going to add those to the control the form. So let's play this and see what happens. And we get an error. So we're getting the error because object not set as an instance of an object. So in other words, each time we go through the loop, we have to have an instance of an object. And because we haven't used the new command here, we don't have an instance of an object. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to go back and say dim l as label. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say labels or l equals new label. And then we're going to say labels i equals l. And now what we can do is rather than we can just change all these to l. So if I double click on these, it's going to take a second just to get these in. And there. So now let's see what goes on here. So I believe this has to be an L here too. So I have to run this and see what happens. So now what you can see is we're actually creating 11 labels, setting the background color, setting the four color. If we're past halfway, it, it changes the, the text color so that it's a different color and that looks great. And one thing to note here is that we're making the array equal to L. We're setting all the properties for L. And then at the end, we don't add L to the form. We add the label array element to the form. So what you have to understand is when you instantiate L, you're actually creating a new instance of a label. And the, each one of those instances is independent, so the properties will be independent of each other. But as soon as you assign a label to another label, if you set the properties of either one or the other, the properties of both will change, even if it's done after the assignment of making them equal. So if you were to, in math, say i equals 5, and then you can say j equals 5, or j equals i. In math, if you say, okay, j equals j plus 2, j would now be 7, but i would still be 5. That's not how it works in programming. In programming, because you're setting these as equivalents, when you change one, you change both. So even though I only change the properties of L, I also change the properties of labels. So it's really important for you to know that that's how instantiation works. So that's pretty cool. We're going to leave this tutorial here. And because I'm out of time, I'm actually going to start another tutorial uh, for this array of controls concept. Because I have another application that's really cool that I want to show you. Um, and we'll do that in the next tutorial. Thank you.